Psychosis. A mental illness where people lose some form of touch with reality. There is however, a common misconception that only schizophrenic individuals are psychotic. When in fact, large percentages of the population, sometimes entire nations, can be induced into psychosis through the narratives of an administration. This is referred to as mass formation psychosis. There are four prerequisites for such a horrifying act to occur. The first is the detachment of societal connections. The second is anxiety. The third is lack of sense. And the fourth is discontent. This lays the platform for an administration to offer a strategy for the aforementioned prerequisites. Turning anxiety into hope, and discontent into gratification. The participants of the strategy, either through coercion or persuasion, are made obedient, destroying liberty at its core. In the beginning of the 20th century, Hitler completely embraced the idea. So today, on True Stories, we will explore how the Nazi party used mass formation psychosis to lead Germany into one of the most catastrophic disasters of history. This story begins with Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the Austria-Hungary throne. The Archduke visited Sarajevo, the capital city of Bosnia, before being ambushed by a group of Bosnian and Serbian terrorists, known as the Black Hand. Attacked with a bomb, before bracing a maelstrom of bullets, the Archduke fell dead on the 28th of June, 1914. In retaliation, Austria-Hungary blamed Serbia and Bosnia, claims which they heavily denied. This denial then led to conflict which claimed the lives of more than 20 million people. Eventually, the First World War came to a close in 1919. With the defeat of Austria-Hungary and its constituents, the Ottoman Empire, Bulgaria, and Germany. Inside the lavish halls of the Palace of Versailles, on the 28th of June, 1919, a peace treaty was signed, officially ending the cross-continental conflict that had torn the world apart for four years. It outlined that the Central Powers had to pay 132 billion gold marks in reparations, equivalent to 442 billion US dollars as of the year 2021, as well as labeling Germany as the main perpetrator of the chaos. Germany's economy was now on thin ice. Then, the Wall Street crash of 1929 sent the crippled nation asunder. The recall of U.S. loans caused the economy to completely shatter. A depression swept across the country. Unemployment soared. Homelessness reached all-time highs. The landscape was totally poverty-stricken. The Treaty of Versailles quite literally isolated Germany from the rest of the world. The German people were now cut off and desperate. Soon, the desperation turned to outrage. The stage was now set for mass formation psychosis. Hitler and his Nazi party took the German political scene by storm, once being practically unknown, winning only 3% of the votes to the German parliament in 1924. Hitler appealed to the ills of the German people by promising financial security, revitalization of pride, and hope for a better tomorrow eventually leading to the Nazis winning 33% in 1932, the most of any party that year. 
The German people, especially the unemployed, young, and members of the working class, were totally enchanted. Hitler was appointed Chancellor the following year, and commissioned massive projects, like the Autobahn, making do on his promises to provide employment and financial security. Hitler would go on to make many gestures, further garnering the trust and obedience of the German citizens. Hitler had even founded Volkswagen, or the People's Car, to provide affordable cars for the working class. Hitler then eliminated all opposition, and when President Hindenburg died in August of 1934, Hitler possessed enough political power and the adoration of the people to declare himself as dictator. Hitler then urged his citizens that the only way for Germany to continue this economic rebuilding is through force and assimilation. At this point, Germany was a nation far too desperate and invested in Hitler's strategy. As a result, the Germans were invading Austria before they knew it, completely paying no mind to the devastation of the First World War, which was only 21 years prior. Germany was now completely totalitarian, ruled through mass formation psychosis. The German citizens were now united and fueled by hope. In order to maintain control, Hitler used three main weapons, the legal system, forcing all judges to swear an oath of loyalty to the Nazi state, and all lawyers were forced to join the Nazi Lawyers Association. Propaganda, through the Ministry of Propaganda, a governmental department with the sole purpose of convincing the German people to embrace Nazi rule through media and public relations. And finally, the Schutzstaffel, or the SS, the police force responsible for ensuring the population remained under control, eliminating any potential threats to the Nazi regime. It oversaw the Gestapo, the Nazi equivalent to the CIA, and ran numerous prisons. As a result, liberty was taken from the German citizens. Without them even knowing, Hitler then led his citizens and the rest of the world into damnation killing 5.2 million Germans and costing the lives of 11.6 million more. A testament to the power of mass formation psychosis. Thank you so much for watching True Stories. If you like this content, please support the brand new channel with a like and subscribe. Ciao Bella.